Ohio towns, they have some of the spookiest stories as we all know, so we're back to cover even more. I've been loving reading through the comments from all of you Ohio residents. I've taken more of your suggestions and I've dug up some more obscure haunted and dark locations as well. Will your town be on this list? Watch and find out. We're starting things off with Miamisburg in Montgomery County, which has some pretty spooky spots, including an Arby's. All kinds of disturbing stuff is said to go on at this fast food joint. Employees closing up for the night alone have said they've heard laughter coming from the basement, only to find no one there. Some will also report having their hair pulled by some unseen force. There's also a ghostly man who sometimes is seen staring into the oven during opening or closing hours. He'll grow Grove Cemetery is probably the most well-renowned haunted hotspot in this town, though some visitors will say they see a young girl crying over a grave, but when approached, she'll just stare at you for a moment before vanishing into thin air. There's also the grave of a preacher's daughter who took her own life after being disowned by her family. A Bible was said to have sat on her grave, with stories of it appearing broken one instant but then perfectly fine the next. Next up is East Liverpool, which is home to a couple haunted parks, a haunted cemetery, and of course, a haunted phone booth. As silly as a haunted phone booth might sound though, uh, the story is actually pretty spooky. So apparently a young man was killed in the area and his ghost haunts the street that he died on. Some will say that on some nights, especially Saturdays during the month of March, passersby will hear ringing coming from the booth. And if you answer the phone, you might just hear a somber, ghostly voice on the other end telling you to look across the street. And if you do, you just might see a headless young man waving before vanishing into the shadows. Now we move on to Sandusky, Ohio, which has a few notoriously haunted spots. One is the Sandusky County Historic Jail and Dungeon. This place, which was built in the 1840s, is no longer a jail or a dungeon, or I guess it technically is a dungeon and a jail, but it's just not operating as one. There are tours of the place though, and the staff and many people who visit claim to have experienced some pretty eerie stuff. Something that's said to happen every so often has to do with the courthouse security system. So sometimes at around two or three in the morning, the motion alarm just goes off, detecting someone or something outside the dungeon door. Whatever it is will then make its way up the steps to the first floor of the courthouse. Now I say whatever it is, because when security cameras get checked, there's usually no one in the footage. But on rare nights, there is a shadowy figure with a brimmed hat seen spotted sitting on a bench outside the courthouse. The fire alarm has also been known to be pulled even when nobody's near it. Whatever spirits are haunting this place, they seem to really enjoy loud, obnoxious noises. And on top of all that, you also have your typical disembodied sounds like voices and footsteps when there's nobody else around. We're gonna stay in Sandusky for a bit though and talk about Cedar Point. Cedar Point is one of the most popular amusement parks in the US, but it also has a bit of a dark side. When we think of haunted theme parks, it's usually the abandoned ones where we picture all the paranormal stuff going on, but Cedar Point is still very much open. It was built in 1870 though, so it's been around for a while, and any theme park that old has definitely had its fair share of horrific accidents. Get it? Fair share theme park? All right. One of the most haunted attractions was the Frontier Town Carousel, which is no longer there, but people would often claim to catch a glimpse of a ghostly woman riding one of the horses. She's said to be the wife of the man who carved the horses on the carousel. He'd killed her after finding out that she was cheating on him with a jockey. So now her spirit is attached to the carousel, coming out at midnight to ride a fake horse every full moon, which she's probably not too plussed about. For a woman who really seemed uh, to like being around horses, a wooden one probably just doesn't cut it. Not to mention uh, that she's stuck in a, a pretty boring ride that was built by the dude who shot her to death. So there's also that. Next on the list we have the town of Wooster. You thought the haunted Arby's was intriguing? Try the haunted Pizza Hut in this town. Yeah, you can't even grab a slice of pizza in Ohio without something paranormal 
or weird happening. I'd love to do a road trip through Ohio visiting every haunted fast food restaurant actually. You could, could call it like Fast Frights Ohio tour or something. So this Pizza Hut is part of a big plaza that was all built over the grounds of a former insane asylum. So there could be some lingering spirits in the area, most of whom seem to really stick to the Pizza Hut. There's also a Taco Bell in the plaza which some paranormal stuff is said to go on but there's not as many stories about that place because there's probably like five people who go to who goes to Taco Bell especially when you have a Pizza Hut right there. I'm gonna get tons of comments now from like like Taco Bell fans being like Taco Bell's the best. I don't know I just think it's kind of mediocre. Staff at the Pizza Hut though have seen figures vanish into the walls. One manager who was closing up for the night was startled to hear footsteps following her and then turned around to see nothing but a white mist hovering in the air. Marietta and Washington County. This town is probably most well known for Anchorage Mansion which is said to be very haunted. It was built by Douglas Putnam for his wife Eliza in the 1800s but it's said Eliza died shortly after moving in and people claim to have seen her ghost wandering around or peeking out of windows. Later on the mansion was turned into a nursing home where residents also reported seeing Eliza's ghost. Some say there are secret tunnels under the mansion as well, maybe from the underground railroad, but nobody really knows if they're haunted as well, but I'm, it's Ohio so I'm, I'm presuming they are. Marriott is also home to a haunted comfort inn where the televisions are known to turn off and on by themselves, doors open and close on their own, and guests will occasionally wake up with the feeling of cold hands on their body, luckily to find that no one is is there in the room with them. I'd, I'd rather have a ghost in my room than a chilly intruder. Again in Washington County we have the village of Fredericksburg which is home to Robin Industries which does custom molding for rubber and plastic components. It was formerly the Fredericksburg pottery site which had a pretty dark past and the building is rumored to be haunted by multiple spirits. There were two major tragic events at Fredericksburg pottery site including two devastating fires and a fatal train accident that took the lives of 12 people. So employees at the site have reported some pretty eerie encounters like feeling sudden cold spots. Now I usually kind of roll my eyes at when people say cold spots. It's like alright uh, spots cold whatever. But these are extra strange because staff will report feeling them behind machinery that runs at extremely high temperatures. One story involves the ghost of a man blamed for the train derailment who is said to show up in the mold room. In the shipping room sightings of an older gentleman believed to be the former mayor who witnessed the tragic train accident have also been reported. Then there's the apparition of an elderly woman who's been seen swinging doors open and shutting off machinery. The stairwell leading to the office is said to be guarded also by a spirit with one employee experiencing a strong stench and then a sudden gust of wind that nearly knocked her down the stairs. And unless someone was eating some bad burritos from Taco Bell that day, I think it might have been a ghost. So I know we've covered Dayton, Ohio already, but I didn't mention the Wright Patterson Air Force Base which is said to be one of the most haunted spots in the state. It's even been featured on Ghost Hunters. One eerie story involves the ghost of a young Vietnamese boy believed to have perished in one of the museum's helicopters. Visitors have reported sightings of the boy wandering the museum grounds after dark. And of course then they go up to talk to him and he's not actually there. It's not just some kid who like ran into the place. There's also a German World War II fighter plane said to be inhabited by the ghost of its pilot. Visitors claim to have seen the pilot waving from the plane's window. Seeing as it's the ghost of a German World War II fighter pilot though I'm not sure if what he's doing is actually a wave. The helicopter named Hopalong is said to be haunted by a pilot who met a tragic end with staff reporting sightings of him desperately flipping switches in a futile attempt to escape. The Black Maria known for its secret missions during the Vietnam War is also said to be haunted by the spirits of soldiers who died on board. The boxcar plane famous for dropping the atomic bomb on Nagasaki is also rumored to be haunted by a young boy who is said to dart past it during the night. Haunted inns, always a staple of small villages and Granville in Licking County, Ohio has one of its very own, the Buxton Inn. This place dates back all the way to 1812 so plenty of history with this place. Even Abraham Lincoln stayed here and some of those who were escaping from the Underground Railroad stayed here at one time as well. So with all the people who have passed through the doors and slept under this roof, all the history surrounding the building, it probably comes as no shock that some 
energy is said to linger within the inn. Not only do you have the spirits of past guests who have long since passed, but even former deceased employees are said to have never fully left. Like one of the previous owners, Ethel Bonnie Houston, for example, who's become known as the Lady in Blue. Several guests have claimed to see a woman in a blue dress roaming the hallways, only to walk right through closed doors or just vanish into thin air altogether. Some have also smelt cigar smoke out of nowhere before spotting a man who also vanishes into thin air. This is said to be the ghost of the inn's founder, Major Buxton. And we're to finish things off with Loudonville in Ashland County. This place is known for its two supposedly haunted spots, one of which is a hotel, the other a park. First, there's Mohican State Park, which is said to be haunted for a couple different reasons. Mainly though, there used to be an asylum on the land in the 1800s, which might help explain some of the ghostly stuff going on. Witnesses have also reported seeing a mysterious light in the park for over two decades. Then there's Landel's Mohican Castle, which is actually a hotel and a damn cool looking one too. Looks like something you'd see in Norway. It was built on the grounds of a former English slash German church. The story goes that in the late 1800s, a dispute over language during worship services led to the church mysteriously burning down after the Germans decided to relocate their relatives' graves. Since the current owners acquired the property in 1991, a series of unexplained fires have just been plaguing the place, including the destruction of a book factory in 92 and an on-site restaurant in 2007. Some believe the land is just cursed, with guests reporting sightings of a girl in blue in the graveyard and hearing crying in the cemetery and pool building. People will also claim to see Civil War era soldiers in their rooms. All right, with all of that said though, I've been your host James and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video. Mm -hmm.